been absolutely wonderful talking to Ender this, this evening. It is absolutely great. Um, uh, Ender, you don't know this, but uh, I'll just, just summarize it. Uh, my view has always been that uh, psychiatry and uh, theatre, dramatists, that they were working towards the same goal but from different ends. So if you think of a, a psychiatrist's job, is that we sit in a room with a person, we listen to them speak, we observe their behaviour, we look at what they're wearing, and we then infer the emotional content of their inner world. And I've always imagined that a, a writer, a playwright's task, is to have a sense of what is going on inside the character, but find the right form of words, find the right form of description of what the character is going to wear, where they're going to be sitting, what the setting is, and therefore allows the audience to infer emotional content. Mm -hmm. so, so it's been absolutely wonderful uh, having you this evening. Just talk to us a little bit about your, your, your work. Um, if I might just say one or two other things and then, and then turn to you. I mean, I thought that um, I, I thought it was very interesting just to talk about the, the fact that um, you know, the, even though all writers have the creative spirit, but that in fact um, the choice of where one, how that is displayed or deployed depends on the circumstances where you're born and who your parents are and so on. So that in your case, you were saying that your mum herself had been a, an actress and that your dad has a, a physical presence and that because he, he owned a furniture shop and he probably was a salesman, you'd observed that from a very young age, you'd seen how he, he was able to command space and so on. And your own interest in wanting to be a, a, a musician that, that had to, obviously a theatricality to it, the idea of performing in front of other people and that that had influenced Choice of, you know, of, of, of whether you'd be, you know, or going in down the direction of, of theatre, uh, even though, from my point of view, um, some of the, the monologues that you gave to your characters are intensely poetic and lyrical. From my point of view, <laughs> you know, absolutely wonderful. Um, so, but it would be interesting just to hear you say a little bit more because you started to say a bit to us about the uh, the characters that you have. That some of them, obviously, they're they're deviant. If I think of psychiatrist mm -hmm. would. But of course, you it didn't seem to me that you thought of them as different characters. What you just did was you picked them for the situation they were in. Mm, yeah, and initially I think uh, you, you, you get a sense of what the situation is, but you're right about because uh, I, mean, uh, I feel as my work and my job is actually just to immerse myself in character and not know initially what a character is, but as you, as you sort of step into the sort of, you know, the feet and the sort of arms and the legs and the head of the character, you and you place the character in a situation, you're, feet, you're, you're, you're carried where that sort of character, uh, you know, the, the pressures that that character is having. So, I mean, a lot of the job, I feel, is like an, almost like an acting job for me. You know, so I'm like a gibbering wreck when I'm writing, you know, like I'm, because I'm taking on all these sort of, these people that are me, but I need to sort of understand actually sort of why they make the decisions that they've sort of made. Yes. And, you know, you place them in situations where it's, it's, it's hard and it's fucking, it's, it feels really, really tough for them and, and it can break them. But I believe in the sort of human spirit, but at the same time, the spirit is not the mind. And it's sort of like, and, 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 and I feel for, 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 you know, that, that you have the sort of compulsion to sort of do something, but maybe your head just isn't, in, isn't right for it or you're not ready for it. Mm -hmm. And this is why I think this is where this, this yes. sort of crash happens. There's so much spirit, so much effort but actually the mind is sort of loaded in a different way. I think again, uh, again, just for a psychiatric audience, the, 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 the two of the plays that we, we, we focused on um, were some of them, two of them, they had in them, uh, from a psychiatrist's point of view, they had a, a traumatic experience in the past, yeah. and which was still being played out in the present. So, so the World War Farce is uh, the action of a person before he came from Cork to England, to, to London, and, and therefore that has been being replayed. And of course that is very, that is a very, if you wish, Freudian idea. So mm -hmm. the uh, Freudian idea is that uh, early childhood experiences continue to have force in contemporary, in contemporary life. And if you think of contemporary psychiatry, people, some people think that memory, you know, a traumatic memory continues to have force and yeah. that uh, a lot of what happens in later life depending on what the traumatic memory is, is an attempt either to recharge that memory or to make the, the intensity of the emotional aspects of it to diminish and extinguish and so on. And, and I thought that you, you know, that some of that, uh, whether knowingly or not, some of that is coming through 
you yeah. know, please. Well, it's always like it's all like I, I think the direction for as we said before, you know, that it's for, it's from a, a, a place of in articulation to be able to articulate who you are, or from a place of lying to a place of truth. Now they they sit, they tend to be sort of always that, and it's like whether you're carrying, you know, a lie of sort of thirty years ago or something that just sort of happened, you know, like two days ago. It's something that needs to be, you know, it needs to be processed, it needs to be sort of worked through, it needs the, the you know, in the case of Mr. Matt, you know, he needs to sort of navigate and go, I, I was right to do what I did, I was right to sort of kill that girl, it was, the, it was definitely the right sort of, you know, it was the only thing that I could actually sort of do at that point. Do you know, but so you're, but you're looking at that, it's always that sort of, you know, complexity and then this sort of freedom of like, oh, yeah, 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 I am who I am and this is the way I am. I thought that, um, the, you know, if we might end here, um, I thought that um, towards the end of the of the evening, the questions came about around about the whole business of language and so on, which mm -hmm. I thought were absolutely wonderful questions they, they were asking. But I also thought your responses were absolutely fascinating for psychiatry. So if you think of psychiatry, uh, the way it's different from other specialties in medicine is that it's totally language dependent. Mm -hmm. So if you think of general medicine and surgery, we examine the patient with our hands. Yeah. So we can see whether they've got a tumor, whether there's something wrong with their chest, we can listen to their hearts, we can listen to their breathing and all that. But in psychiatry, all you, all you have is the capacity to sit down with another human being and have this exchange of words. Mm -hmm. And on the basis of that exchange of words, come to some understanding together, jointly, of what the problems are. And I thought your, 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 uh, I thought your response was wonderful, this idea that um, for a writer, um, and Jean-Paul Sartre did, did say something like this as well. That for a writer, the, the words become like a, they become like a, like a, a building block. Like mm -hmm. you know, they can be heavy, they can be light, um, they can be oppressive, um, and that they are you know you carry them everywhere. And as you said, they're heavy. You know, <laughs> you wish you had a paintbrush. <laughs> but then, yeah. what's even more complicated yeah. about them is that as soon as they leave your mouth. There's sort of there's so many variables to the way they actually sort of sound. This is why sort of theatre is really complex. Yeah. You know, like uh, when a character begins to sort of talk, it's like, ah, how do we sort of how do we then begin to sort of read that? Yeah. And sort of like you know like and understand that there's so many different sort of understandings to whatever a phrase yes. is. Yes. Yes. So they're really? loaded. They're like bloody the, bullets. Yes. Yes. The amb ambiguities of the meaning. Yeah. Which we we face every day. Yeah, I know, I know, it's bloody because, mind Because we don't know, we don't know what the person means. We don't know whether they whether they mean the opposite of what they've said. Um, we don't know whether what they're saying is actually an attempt to conceal something else. And of course, you guys in theatre, you're doing that all the time. We do, that, we, we do that all the time. And all you're sort of doing a lot of the time is actually, you're trying to sort of charge the silence. You're trying to sort of understand what the subtext is. So potentially, I, I presume that's what you guys... <laughs> that's what we do it's all like, the time. It's all it is, is actually trying yeah. to sort of read what sort of subtext is. Yeah. And actually, then the answer is in the subtext. Yeah. The answer yeah. is always in the silence. Yeah. So all these blah, 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 blah words, are there to sort of find an answer at the end. And the answer is always etched out as soon as the audience yeah. go, I think we understand that we understand it now. Well, thank you very much. <laughs>